will be a bright tomorrow. That glorious day when the King of all kings comes to take us away.
reached out and touched a place on the inside that no human could ever touch. And Lord, you can take me and mold me and make me wanna give up, but I never wanna give up. Oh Lord, please speak to me, cause I can't belong to hear from you. From your throne up above Let me see your glory That I've been longing for That my soul can never get enough Oh, the glory of Jesus Shines brighter and brighter Yes, Lord, the closer I get The more
You know, many of us as Christians sometimes forget where the Lord has taken us from. And as a result, we fail to give Him the glory. But I would like to draw your attention to the fact that all of us, I mean all of us, are nothing without God. Sometimes we get so proud, so high-minded, but we should be reminded by the scripture in St. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humble himself shall be exalted. So this is why I would like to share this song with you. Where from to high, Lord. Out 
But the word of the Lord declares, Blessed are they that mourns, for they shall be comforted. And if you really need that comfort, the Lord Jesus Christ will grant you according to his will. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand on the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall be old and not another. Job said, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. And everybody say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are going to a program opening him. I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. Let's sing to the glory of God. I'll see the
here at this morning with these feelings as we both celebrate and mourn the life of a loved one. But the word of the Lord declares, in everything, give thanks and glory be to God. For it is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And oftentimes when you find yourselves in situations like these, it's not easy from a human perspective to give thanks, but we ought to give thanks unto the Lord. Can somebody bless the name of Jesus? Can somebody bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah! We're going to be praying this time. You may observe on your program, open prayer. It's supposed to be done by Minister Rowan Ricketts. Unfortunately, he is unavoidably absent. So may I ask that we bow our heads right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our soon coming King, in you we live, in you we move, and in you we have our being. The heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. The heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, your God. You change it not, your compassion, they fail not. Lord God, we have gathered here this morning, Lord, as we celebrate the life of our loved ones. Oh God, we know in situations like these, Lord, it's not easy for the bereaved family, but I pray now that you will bring comfort, Lord. Your words declare, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And you are the mighty comforter. Lord, I pray now that you will undergird them with your presence, Lord. Oh God, we ask of you that everything that will be said and done in this place today, that it will be done to your glory and to your honor. Oh, mighty God, when it's a need this place, I pray thee now that hearts will be transformed, lives will be touched. Oh, great God Almighty, let there be an outpouring of your spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, find the one together today with cords that cannot be broken. Lord Jesus Christ, and one that will take an active role, we pray that you will grant strength, grant courage in the name of Jesus Christ. In times like these, oh mighty God, we can call on you. Oh yes, you never fail. Lord God, when we know what to do, when strength seems to, oh God, be failing, we can find strength in you because your strength is made perfect in our weakness, Lord God. Breathe upon this gathering today. Oh mighty God, strengthen the Lord God those that mourn in the name of Jesus as your word go forth today. Let there be receptive hearts. Let there be clarity of speech. Let something be said that will bring about a change in the heart of somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ, have your own sweet way. Lord Jesus Christ, we look to you today and we ask of you, Lord, to do it again. Lord Jesus Christ, you have done it before, but you are the same God. Hallelujah. This is an opportunity for somebody to hear your word. This is an opportunity for somebody to take heed. This is an opportunity for somebody to repent. This is an opportunity for somebody to accept you. Lion of Judah, open the floodgates and let it rain from your throne room. In the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit take control of everything today. In the name of Jesus, break down every idol and cast out every foe. Wash us your people. You take no pleasure in the destruction of man. Lion of Judah, you are still the same in business. So we ask that you'll have your way. And everybody lift your hands and say in Jesus' name. Jesus. Lift your hands and say in Jesus' name. Jesus. The Lord bless you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let me use this opportunity and be out of all the saints here at Calvary Pentecostal Tabernacle to offer our deepest and sincere condolences to 
the Morris family during this time of grief and sorrow. If you feel like crying, cry. Oftentimes when he, one finds themselves in a situation where you are overwhelmed by emotions and you are able to verbalize your feelings, then tears becomes your language. But God, he understands. We are going to the reading of the first scripture. And I see that the lower podium is being provided for those who will be participating. You may use the lower podium. The reading of the first scripture comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You read it from verse 1 to verse 8. And this will be done by Olivia Long, granddaughter. Grandson, followed by a remembrance from Leroy Morris Nevin. May I ask that you come in the order? Love, 
that he has for his family and everybody that was able to uh, meet him. The strength of his commitments, the genuineness of his friendships, the sincerity of his heart, which is purpose to make a way for his family. The fun, the laughter, the joyfulness to everybody that had the opportunity to meet Papa. And I'll end with one of my favorite quotes that I find so fitting to share about Papa. The ultimate measure of the man is not where he stands in moments of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy by Dr. Martin Luther King. And that was the life that Papa exemplified. Thank you. Church for clergy, family members, friends, extended family members, members of the congregation, and those joining the virtual platform. Good day. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanish away. These are the words from James 4, verse 14. Time won't wait. This simple phrase encapsulates an undeniable truth that governs every aspect of our lives. The relentless, indifferent march of time underscore our existence fleeting nature reminding us oh God that our real power lies in how we choose to spend it equate time to money but unlike money time once spent is irretrievable each passing second is the last opportunity I like in time as our most precious commodity. Recognizing its value can shape both our professional and our personal life. It was mid early 1970s that I was moved to live with my grandfather. The yard as it was then, a big family space. The top yard being grand grandfather's house. Next to it we have this IC and above we have Larry's home. And bottom yard being Roy. Yes, Papa Roy. Scoreboard. Our simple box dwelling. Uh, I spent a lot of time at Grandpa's house as they were where most children would go for sweet cooking. After the death of Grandpa, Box took over at that, as that great cook. And many of us can attest to that because we have had to eat his frequent meal that he would prepare. If you are keen enough then, you can pick up and learn a lot from the person living at those different homes that I mentioned earlier. But today we will reflect and bounce. True giants are measured by more than their status and impact us more than numbers on a ledger. Today the vacuum of our left is many. I can recall a situation where Carl is the son inside and he will not eat pork. 
So Bob and Mr. Irving came up with a formula that for two separate pots to be cooked, whenever pork is to be cooked, there has to be more than one person in the house that eat it pork. So since myself and Carl were parent at the time, I also took the decision to stop eating pork. So at Christmas, Bob chose to carry several well-prepared ham in the house. You could smell it from afar. Now each year this happened, the ham would finish very fast. But Colin Donovan would never be blamed. In most cases, sorry Pat, but Pat gets the blame. So, Bugs set up a sting operation and Carlos carted the dog. It was, this, it was his leadership that I admired most because although I was not involved, he took the decision to continue cooking two pots for my benefit. What a hump, please. I literally grew up in his hands. Pokeroi has a catalytic sense of urgency. But he was also patient with inactivity. I think I heard my fast walking trying to follow his footsteps as I see him in those early days. After the death of my father, myself and my elder brother basically called his home our home. And so it was. Papa Roy had many talents. For most persons who I would have seen his regular smile, which is something that if not work sometimes people say they can't read my face because when you mingle with Papa Roy at that time you are able to disguise your true feelings, but um, you smile it up. So folks was a very neat and chopper. That's what I call him in those days because he had more than one job. He works at the runners. Um, mining refinery and at the same time he was also a butcher and so box was strategic most of you might always see with a watch flashing and sometimes you guys wonder why box is flashing his hand but he was an excellent scheduler he knows time and he, he keeps time as far as his mantra and so I, being very close with this Irving, had to work with Papa Roy in terms of ensuring that the produce that, um, that would have come from that aspect stayed to the place that it really needed to go. One thing I know, Bugs never understand. Right? And that, as I said, was his mantra. When we share everything that uh, his children had, there was no difference, that's between my brother and I. We actually were treated special. So you could come into the yard and know that this is Marco's son and that is Papa Roy's kid. Because we were one family. So if you talk to Vicky and all the siblings and that, that are there, anybody who comes into the yard just see us as one unit. It was love. One thing I'll tell you is that pretty early I recognized how important education was. In Papa Roy's home, it was a house that many children dwell. But one of the things about it, we have to find innovative ways of learning our bookwork. So in the back rooms where most of us would always be, We'll be doing our work. As much as Papa Roy would be in the front room and all the noise is being made, at no time he would ever come around because he recognized that kids are kids and we ought to be the same. Papa Roy, as I said, shared everything that his children had with us and it was no different. The love given to us was bountiful. We could play games at our, our young age of which he was a part such as Ludi, Domino, and just to name a few. Sorry. The first time 
I had to kill this man in a loading game. I was scared because uh, I didn't know how he would deal with it. But he just smiled and said, play your hand. You know, after migrating to Kingston during high school, we remained in contact, and I can assure you, the values I learned was life changing. I must say where I am today in my journey, he played a significant role in that development. I was one of those persons who don't come to Golden Grove very often after Papa and um, left for um, overseas. But upon his return and his illness, after a few visits and sitting and reasoning with him, I realized that the memories we share and the information we would give was value added. Papa Roy in his in person, in his personal voice, in his personal voice and phone voice was reflective, was oh sorry, was not reflective of illness. In other words, if you call Bob's on the phone, you could not know that he was ill because his voice was in louder and bigger and stronger than any teenage youngster. His mind and mathematical skills were very much intact up to his death. Today we celebrate the life of a man that has lived a full life. According to Psalm 90 verse 10, the days of four years are three scores and ten. But if by reasons of strength they be four scores, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon to cut off and be fly away. Morris' family, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 14 said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that is sorrow not, he must others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. I recall having a discussion with him about Christ and his soon coming and reminded him that his wife was an ordinary Christian. He simply said, I have prayed up. I had many dreams of angels coming to and fro. While I am not at the place to say where he will be on that great day, he lives four, uh, four scores at eleven and is now asleep. All his children have grown up in church and part of the legacy he and his wife left behind is that commitment and example of knowing Christ. Let not your heart be troubled, but let the troubled water be your friend and guide as you move into the untried future. If I was to take the words that he would share with you today, it would be, I'm free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left, left it all. I could not stay another day. He loved to love, to work, or play. The task left undone must stay that way. I found that place at the close of day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembering me with joy. A friendship shared, a love, a kiss. Oh yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savored much. Good friends, good time. A loved one touch. Perhaps my time seems all too brief. But don't let me with a new grief. Lift up your heart and cheer me. God wanted me now. He set me free. Thank you. Very well said, Mr. Morris. As the sunrise, heading this way. Only remember.
by what you have done. We'll now have a song selection by the Morris Girls and Acts. Will they come at this time? Thank you. 
any colors. There is absolutely, positively nothing that can separate us from the love of our heavenly. Can we bless the Lord, everyone? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy sins. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years when we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yeah, the work of our hands establish thou it. We'll be going to the tributes. We'll have the first tribute from Newton McLean's son-in-law, followed by Pauline Privat's granddaughter and Andrea Broadbell needs me ask if you come in that order. Praise the Lord. Let the church say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I should have, praise the Lord. I should have gone before Leroy. He sums up his whole life. Now I'm going to repeat some of what he has said. Yes. But Pop Rock, 91 years. That's three lifetime plus. That's a good life. It's a decent life. When I met Pop Roy, as David said, it was joy. The smile on his face. The love that Pop Roy had towards me, it even gets some of his own children man. <laughs> I kid you not, every time we call to find out how he's doing, my wife said, Pop Roy, how you doing? His response, how is fit? <laughs> Every time, like clockwork, the conversation will go nowhere until you find out what I'm doing. I'm going to miss Papa Roy so much. Every time we visit, I always look forward to giving him my earbud, shaving him, 
you wash his feet, cut his nails, and he just sit back. Not a man of too much word, but the smile on his face. And definitely the pot roast. He makes a mean pot roast. But you know, when we talk about legacy, for 91 years, we have left a lot of legacy for years to come. So many of us learn to cook, learn how to be a gentleman who provides effectively for the family. One thing about Papa, he takes good care of his family. Even going to church, a lot of time we have to press him to go, but he's going to make sure that everybody else goes to church. <laughs> Praise God. What else can we say about Papa? As I said, it's a life well lived. The love we share, we have it in our hearts. One thing that we always do as a family, we stick close and we look out for each other. The family was there right up until the very end. It's a lot of pain, but he's in a better place. There's no more pain, no more sickness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm one of Pop Ryan's little granddaughter, beautiful granddaughter. <laughs> I'm going to still call Pop Ryan today. Memories. Death leaves credit. No one can heal. Memories are treasures. No one can steal. Some may forget you now that you're gone, but we will remember. No matter how long, you will always stay loved and remembered in every way. No tears, no verse. Can ever say how much you'll miss your everyday pop boy. Um, basically, everybody summed up how pop boy was. Everybody told me I was gonna cry. Yeah. But what can I say about pop boy? Pop boy is stress free. He lived 91 years of life. He has the life expectancy. And we should all inspire to be like pop boy. He didn't let anything bother him. And Look, we all came from Pop Run. We're all beautiful, loving. I mean, guys, I really don't know what to say. I'm, I'm kind of emotional. But, like I said, everybody basically before me summed up what Pop Run was. And like I, I don't know, like I said, Papa, I just, the one thing I take from Papa is to be like stress free. I aspire to be like that. I'm so sorry. Papa is the, from my heart, Papa is the third man I lost in my life. I lost my other grandfather, I lost my father. Papa is the third man. Papa is special to me because he was special to my dad. My dad, he always talk about Papa. Papa always asked like Uncle Phil said. Once Papa called, even though my father and my mother were together, he would always ask my dad. Papa made sure his family stood together. And like I said, I grew up in the We as a family, we need to stick together because that's what Papa wants. Papa is not here. He was a patriarch of our family. So now we have to keep it living. We have to keep the legacy going. That we have to love each other, stick together. And that's what we can say, because that's from my heart. I didn't write anything. This is truly from my heart. And I love I love you guys. Yeah, not big on family. I love you guys. And hopefully this is this feel is not what's gonna bring us together. Hopefully we can stick together, stick together as a family. Because we have to keep Pop Right legacy going. So that's what we really have to say. And I really love you guys and Pop Right, I love you and rest in peace. On behalf of 
the family. I would like to express our heartfelt thanks to everyone for their kindness, support, and comforting words that have been shown towards our family during this difficult time. It's been pretty overwhelming the love that we've got from everyone. We're grateful for all the people who are instrumental in taking care of Papa Roy while he was ill throughout the years. We are very grateful. We may not be able to mention everyone by names, but for all those who played an integral role in taking care of our dad and helping him out with his day-to-day -day chores, there's not enough words to express our gratitude. To the friends and family who have helped out in so many ways, to, to those who have stopped by to engage Papa Roy in conversation, we truly appreciate you all. Your expression of sympathy, prayer, and thoughts have been well received with gratitude and we're eternally grateful. Lastly, thank you for all, all for sharing in the celebration of Papa Roy's life, a great man. The love and support that we feel will always stay in our hearts. Thank you all so much. Thank you. May I ask the ushers to come this time as we go to offer him. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the interim, go ahead as we bless that which we are about to receive. Father, we thank you for this moment you have given unto us. Lord, we ask that you will bless those who will give to the cause of the kingdom, those who have not to give, we ask that you are blessed as well as we use it to the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace.
and we got to be cognizant of the fact that wishful thinking alone is not going to take us there. We have got to do what is required to get there. Can somebody give God praise? And if you have not yet made the necessary preparation, you are in the right place at the right time. Can somebody bless the name of the Lord Jesus? I, I, I'm sure the late sister Herman Morris would be happy if one grandson or granddaughter at least get the Holy Ghost in this service today. Can somebody give God praise in the sacrament? Can somebody bless the name of the Lord? I, I know, I know, sister, sister, hold the brown should be watching right now. And if you want to bring joy to her face, let somebody get a Holy Ghost in the service today. Can somebody bless the name of the Lord Jesus? Is dead. There's nothing more we can do. But those of us who are alive today, there's an opportunity for somebody. Hallelujah. There's an opportunity for somebody. And you're at the right place at the right time. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to. Hallelujah. The favorite, a special instrumental selection. From Dale Brown, Grand Negative. Followed by a poem by Ariel Coley, Grand Daughter, and a tribute from Lloyd Sharp, Son in Law. May I ask that you come in that order? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dale Brown. I am um, the nephew. Well, you can't call it grand because I'm a special. Um, the song I'm about to share with you is one that really just speaks to the goodness of God. It's not my intention to distract you from grieving. Grieving is a process that can take part of the rest of your life.
because godliness with contentment is great gain. We don't have to worry about today because God will always provide for the day. And that's how Papa Roy lived his life. I'm free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God has laid for you see. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of day. If my party has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Oh yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and peace to be. God wanted me now, he set me free. Pleasant good day to everyone here. Amen. There's only one body here, you know, at Roy Marks. A pleasant good day to everyone. Amen. I'm just here, Brother Shah, just to say a tribute for this occasion. It's a occasion where a lot of people are grieving and mourning. But we gotta remember the unique words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, blessed that do it so mourn. I happened to meet Papa Roy over 40 years ago, a long time, amen? amen. And I didn't know it would come reach up to this. But he was a man that did a lot of good deeds faster. A lot of good deeds, even in his old age when he returned to Jamaica, he was still doing a lot of good deeds. And I want the family members to remember that and try to learn from his good deeds. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, his first public sermon in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Papa, I did that. Amen? Amen? He happened to be blessed and highly favored. 91. Some people say in the Bible say 3, 4, and 10, which is 7. But if you do the research on the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says 126. So it all depends on what you are hoping for, wishing for, or what your favor is. I would just like to quote from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 25. It reads like this. All through the good works of some are manifested beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hidden. How about good works it wasn't hidden? I just heard Pastor Malcolm mention his wife, Herman Morris. She was a praying woman. She prayed for me. I remember she prayed for my son that was here a few moments ago. He had major heart surgery at two days old. No, he served one. If I don't tell anyone he had major heart surgery, they won't believe it. I went to a church where I know he was a God, but I didn't know if it was he, she, or the whole lady. Amen? I'm not lying. On the night when I called the sermon, I said, Sister Mark, they did heart surgery on David, two days old. She said, boy, don't worry about it. Tomorrow night we're going to prayer meeting on Bible study, and we can take to the Lord in prayer. Did it pay out? Did it work out? Yes, it did. Now, David, minister under the UPCI banner, and to God be the glory. It's nothing I had done, but someone prayed for him. No, he can pray for himself and his wife and his family. So what I'm saying, good works does work out. And I'd like to remind some of the family members here today, some of the sons and grandsons and granddaughters, Papa Roy was more than a father. If we 
going to do. Sometimes it was just a baby sitting you know. Good works. Nobody, everybody's silent, but it's the truth. The truth is the truth, it can't be that. Sometimes he will be watching his Western movies, and the kids come, or the grandkids come, and he said, take a seat of cover, let's watch some Western. You get a snap, you get juice, and after five minutes, everybody is tuned to the Western. He did some good works, and he pays off. Amen? So what I would like some people to remember of Papa Roy is good deeds when he did. Even when he was working on rivers, you know, a lot of people don't know he was doing good deeds. He went to the States, good deeds. He returned back to Jamaica, good deeds. Some of them we can't talk about. Amen? So I just want to remind someone today, let's just cherish them as memories. Memories. And we can take the memory on with us. Amen? God bless you. Thanks. Amen. As I said, I'm sir. We'll now have the reading of the eulogy. This will be read by Michael Sharp, Grand with Son. Born on March 31st, 1932, and departed this life to his rest on Tuesday, May 30th, 2023, at the age of 91. He was the first son of Granville and Floribel Morris of Golden Grove, St. Andrew, Maine. He was the second of six children. His brothers, Conrad, Manrose, Ransford, George, and Larry, preceded him in death. Roy attended Golden Grove All Age Primary School. And after he graduated, he went to work for Reynolds, Jamaica Boxside Mining Company for 30 years. While working at Reynolds, he also worked for himself as a butcher. Roy met and married the love of Roy met and married the love of his life, of his life, Herman Garrett on June 9, 1963. Their union brought into this world seven wonderful children. He was a loving husband, father, and a hardworking individual. When his late wife migrated to the States before the rest of his family, he took care of his children. He nursed them with such love and passion about preparing their daily meals. It was a delight his children looked forward to, especially his famous treats of chocolate he would bring home every Friday evening. His special love and affection was eventually passed down to his grandchildren. Roy was a family man with a big heart. His love, dedication, and passion as a husband, father, and grandfather was outstanding. In 1985, he migrated to the United States to join his wife, Mary Morris. He started working with his brother Ransford in New York City at Timone Group Construction Company along with other companies. After living in the United States for several years, Roy retired. He and his late wife, who enjoyed 47 years of marriage, returned to their homeland, Jamaica. Roy, also known as Scorebug, but was affectionately called Papa Roy. Lorna, the oldest of their children, was the first to call him Papa Roy, and everyone eventually followed. Even while he was living in the United States, everybody called him Papa Roy. He was very supportive to his family, friends, and people in the community, always ready to give a helping hand. Roy was known to wear a big smile on his face, especially in the presence of his grandchildren. He wouldn't say very much, but the smile he had on his face whenever his family was around said it all. A man of few words, but what an impact those words had when spoken. On Saturdays, being a man who loved to cook, he would cook his favorite beef soup and roast pork. His love for watching old western movies, horse racing, and playing dominoes was the joy of his weekend. Roy Wood Morris preceded his wife, Herman Morris, and survived by his children, who will forever cherish his memory. Sons Carl and Lennox, daughters Lorna, Patricia, Angela, Yvette, and Sally Ann. Son Sons-in-laws Lloyd, Newton, and Orville. Daughter-in-law Michelle, 
19 grandchildren, 16 great-grandchildren, the sister of Denisha Clark, and sister-in-law, Hoda Brown. He also leaves to mourn a host of nieces, nephews, relatives, and friends. May his soul rest in peace. You have just listened to the reading of the eulogy. May invite the congregation to stand. We will be singing from our program, Guide Me, O My Great Redeemer.
And at this time, I take great pleasure in inviting him to come as he share with us that which the Lord has laid on his heart. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Malcolm, and praise the Lord, everybody. Can you lift your hands and say, Praise the Lord. Come on, everybody, just say, Praise the Lord. So that is just repeating an instruction. How about we praise the Lord for ourselves now? Bow your heads with me, Father. We thank you for today. We thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to come together. Even though the occasion is one that is with mixed emotions and mixed feelings, we ask your blessings on the many portion of today's proceedings. All glory to God. More than all, that your word will impact our lives, will inspire our thoughts, and will challenge us to change for your name's sake and for your glory. Hallelujah. All this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. As it is in heaven, so let it be on earth, even in this tabernacle today. We ask it all in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. amen. The Lord bless you, and be seated. to our officiating minister and host pastor of this assembly, Pastor Garfield Malcolm, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus, to all other ministers, Elder Sharp and Minister David Sharp, amen, who are in the congregation, to all the saints and friends who come and greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. A special greetings to the family, there are no words that can fill the void that is created by the passing of your loved one. But the only one who can bring comfort in such time of pain is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can do that. And I heard my good friend Bill mention earlier that grief seeing just doesn't end. A few days ago, it was the 13th anniversary of my mother's passing. So I went by the cemetery and, you know, just brought some water and washed off the grave. I didn't give her anything to drink. I just washed off the grave. I washed off my dad's grave and my uncle's grave that was next door to it. And it just brought back so much memories. And then I began wondering, what state are they in now? In a little while, you're going to start wondering what's happening to them. It's a part of the process. But it's going to be alright. With Jesus, it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. I bring you condolence this morning or this afternoon on behalf of my family and the church family of discipleship and restoration ministries. We have prayed and will continue to pray your strength. Amen. We won't promise you that every time we pray we will call your name, but we will be praying for you. Yes. Um, don't want to make you a promise that we can't keep. Sometimes we get into prayer and we don't remember anybody else but ourselves. And have you ever been in that kind of prayer? Amen. God bless you. I especially want to mention the fact that I remember the days as a child growing up and all of this family, we grew up together in Sunday school and reciting and singing and Christmas nights and all of that. Amen. So just feel like a childhood uh, memories coming back. Yes, at that time, you know, David and I were talking about the church was so small that we didn't realize how small it was. So where those columns are, and where these columns are, this was just a church. But it looked big then. <laughs> now it looks so small, you know, but we thank God for His goodness. Praise God. I will not be long. 
I will share with you from the Word of God, and I seek to share on the subject, draw nigh to God. Yes. Of course, as Pastor Malcolm said earlier, we have paid tribute to Roy Wood Morris, Papa Roy. And we have spoken of him and his good deeds. Now the spotlight is turned on all of us. The preaching of the word is not for him at this time, but it's for you and I. So would you be kind enough to tell your neighbor the word is coming for us? Come on, tell somebody the word is coming for us. Yes, the word is coming for us. Draw nigh to God. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 8, the Apostle James, as he wrote the general epistle to the church, he says, uh, just an excerpt from it, one verse, he says, draw nigh to God. Yes. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Let's try to understand this. In simple terms, draw nigh means get close. If you're close, get closer. If you're not close at all, then get close, get near. So to draw nigh means to draw near. To whom should we draw nigh? To God. Who is God, by the way? God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's right. That being said, drawing nigh to God is not a physical activity, but rather spiritual. So you cannot draw nigh to God by just coming to an altar, attending church services. You cannot draw nigh to God that way. The way to draw nigh to God is through the Spirit. But how do we do that? It still requires further clarity. The further clarity is that as a human being, we are made up of three major components, body, soul, and spirit. So if we cannot draw nigh to God from the physical, it means this body can't draw nigh to God. Oh, hallelujah. This body cannot draw nigh to God. Inasmuch as we do the best with this body, it's going back to the dust of the earth one day. That's where it's from, and to the dust it shall return. Can we draw nigh to God then through our mind and spirit? Yes, we can. Because when we speak of the soul, we're speak, speaking of the thinking faculty of the man. And according to the scripture, it is with the mind that we serve God. Not with the body. With the mind. But when the mind is in tune with God, we're going to handle the body in reverence to God. That's right. But the body is not what we used to serve God. We serve God with the mind. So then, it is important we understand that drawing nigh to God requires consistent communion with God. All of the persons who developed a relationship with Roy Wood Morris, and we know him generally as Pop Roy. I didn't even know his middle name was Wood until some time ago I had some documents to do for him as a Justice of the Peace. And that was the time I, I saw the name. I said, oh, <laughs> I just knew as Pop Roy. I know his last name was Morris. I assumed his first name was Roy, 
But that wasn't so important, I just know it was Pap Roy. And look until I learned the proper name. Amen. So the fact is, everyone who built a relationship with him and whoever we have built relationships with, it all started with communication. You just cannot have a relationship without talking. Likewise, to draw nigh to God requires communion with God. That's right. And oftentimes we're mindful of having communion with God to the point whereby we have a lot to say to God, but not a lot of time to listen to God. The conversation is not ended until you've gotten a response, then you can guarantee that the listener understood what you said. Right. So to draw nigh to God requires communion with God. But the Word of God says, when we draw nigh to Him, He will draw nigh to us. So it's an automatic response. It's conditional. Our duty is to draw nigh to Him and He will. It's not per adventure. It's not maybe. He will draw nigh to us. Right. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah to that? Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, tell them, say hallelujah, man. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So he will draw nigh to you. The fact is, we ought to remember that God is never and has never been slack concerning his promise. That's right, so that's the word. He's consistently true to his word. He's a covenant keeper. Yes. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard the song, Way Maker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Valley? That's who he is. Hallelujah. He has always kept his promises. So then, if we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. Let me quickly get to the rest of the verse. The next clause says, Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And that doesn't require liquid soap and water. Because it's not this literal hand that the word is talking about. Yeah. But cleanse your hands, ye sinners, speaks to the fact that we ought to cleanse our deeds, the things we do. And one may say, well, how do we do that? The root of cleansing our deeds is true repentance. True, T-R-U-E, repentance. There's a type of repentance which is called superficial repentance, which in, in actuality it's not really repentance. It's just the form of. When we truly repent, we change. We turn from our wicked ways. We turn from the things which are contrary in the sight of God and we turn to the true and living God. So James says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now watch this. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, speaks to the deeds. Purifying your hearts, ye double-minded, it speaks to our ways. Yeah, right. The fact is, the deeds are the things we do. Our ways are who we are. It's exactly who we are. It speaks to our character. So we can cleanse our hands and watch what James is saying and to whom he's speaking. He's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to the world. He's speaking to the church. And one may say, but this sounds rude. How could the Apostle James be calling the church people sinners? Because every single one of us sin, we come short of the glory of God. And there is always need for repentance. So he said, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Now speaking to the character, speaking to our ways. So watch this, we can do all the deeds we want, but who are we within makes the difference. Oh, glory to God. 
I hear Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The heart, what heart? Is it the heart of a bird? No. The heart of a beast of the field? No. The heart of a man. The heart of human beings. The heart is deceitful above all things. Wow. Deceitful above all things. So when compared to everything on the face of the earth, beneath the earth, above the earth, that is deceptive, the heart of man is more deceitful. Yes. I bet you never knew that we were that bad. Yes. And this is not about man in terms of attending church or not attending church. Man in general, our hearts is deceitful above all things. But not only is it deceitful, because when we speak of deceitful, we're speaking of being dishonest. Hello? Yes. Dishonest? Mm -hmm. When we speak of deceitful, we're speaking about being deceptive. Is that understood? Yes. But not only that, the Bible says, and desperate to the wicked. The word desperate there is not speaking of being anxious about something. So you know when you're desperate to drink some water? Therefore, you're longing, you're thirsty, and you're really thirsty, so you are desperate in need of a cup of water. But in this context, desperate speaks to incurable. My God. Can we share this word, brothers and sisters? I'll be just a few minutes more. I will not be long. Oh, hallelujah. So, Baba says, the heart of man is deceitful above all things, and desperate incurably wicked, incurable wicked, incurably wicked. Therefore, man's heart cannot be cured except by God's divine intervention. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now watch this, and this might startle you a bit. The fact is, even those of us who have experienced the love and grace of God still have the challenge with a heart that's desperate to win. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Sometimes circumstances drive us to the point to surprise ourselves. So we may feel sanctified until something angers us. And we're shocked at ourselves. Our reaction and retaliation. Sometimes we're not even careful to respond, but we react and retaliate. Yeah. It's because of our hearts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And everybody's heart. Everybody's heart. You see how good we look? Hello. Look at the person on the side and just let them know how good they look. Hallelujah. Now look back at them and say, but you know your heart is not good though. That's our heart. Oh God. Now I feel like I want to cry because the truth is, how many of us would acknowledge though that there was a time when we feel so sanctified we thought our heart was good? <laughs> Until circumstances reach us and we recognize our heart is deceitful above all things. Desperate wicked. I hear the 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 the, the the prophet Jeremiah echoed the words of the Lord and he says, Who can know it? You know what Jeremiah is saying? Nobody can understand even their very own heart. Nobody can understand even our very own hearts. In verse 10, the word of God says of Jeremiah 17, he says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Oh my God. So even when we search our own hearts, we don't find some of the stuff that's there. Yeah. There, is some, there are some hidden chambers in our hearts that we, we can't even find what's there. Yeah. But the Lord says, I, the Lord. Now, I love how the Lord speaks in this context. He says, I, the Lord. So he used the first person pronoun, I. Yes, I did well in English at school. The fact is, he says, I, the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Just in case you wonder who is speaking, it is the Lord speaking. He says, I, the Lord, listen what he does, 
search the heart. No wonder the psalmist says, search me, O oh God. I know my heart, I pray. Hallelujah. Anybody want the Lord to search your heart right, right now? Right, right now? He says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Now this is what else the Lord does. I try the reins. Now when we speak of searching the heart, what he does, he searches our very emotions. The Bible says, I try the reins. Rain, R-E-I-N, speaks to a slender, thin strap attached to the mouth with a bit and bridle across the mouth of an animal, such as a donkey or a, a horse. So the rider of the horse holds the reins. When he pulls back the donkey or horse knows, I need to slow down or stop. Amen. When he shakes, the horse starts to gallop, starts to run fast. Are you with me? Now we are not animals of that sort. So there's no bitten bridle. But when the Bible said, I the Lord, I try the reins, what he's saying, I try or test the mind. Oh, glory to God. So I'm looking at you now, you're looking at me, and we can't even determine what we're all thinking. Amen. We can't determine. But God tries the reins. He tries the reins. Hallelujah. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings or his deeds. The wise man Solomon declared in chapter 4 verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence. Be very cautious with our hearts. For out of it are the issues of life. Matthew chapter 15, the 19th verse, final scripture says, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Out of whose heart? Question, out of whose heart? Hello? Not your neighbor's heart? Whose heart? Everybody's heart. My heart. Your heart. So hear what we do, ladies, gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Let's keep our hearts with all diligence. Yes, Today we will lay to rest. Papa Roy. His remains. The real Papa Roy is not even here. Amen. 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 Here you are. So we will lay his remains to rest today. But we are still here. You and I, we are still here. And in closing, I want to bring to your attention the fact that you will observe what's going on around the world today. And just to name a point, to list a point or two. COVID is again on the rise in Jamaica. Did the Bible speak about pestilences? Yes. Various diseases are breaking out all over the world. It's one of the sign of the end. We don't mind listening to the news or watching the news or reading the paper and recognize earthquake in various parts. Oftentimes back in Asia, in Indonesia, in Japan, there are earthquakes and hundreds of people are destroyed. And you know what? We go to bed and sleep without even worrying about that. It's not where I am, so it's no big deal. We have plans for tomorrow while there are some people wondering how are they going to make it out of the rock. It's a part of the end time. Nations.
nations rising against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. Heard of the news a few days ago that the United States of America wanted to, well, they have sent a new ambassador to Jamaica. And they've asked of the Jamaican government to receive the partner of this ambassador, who is same sex. Two men who are married, and they want Jamaica to receive this man and give him diplomatic immunity. And Jamaica is resisting. Now, some would say, some would say, it's good that Jamaica is resisting, but how long will Jamaica resist? Because everything that is to come upon the earth will come upon the earth. I've got to realize that I need to stop wasting my strength praying some prayers, because some prayers don't make sense. You can pray from now till the morning. Some people would say, you know that? <laughs> There's some things that the Lord spoke of in His Word that you can't pray against and stop. What you can do is draw nigh to God. So some people are very worried about what's going to happen around us. What's next? What's next? What's next? You're wondering when you go to bed at night, will somebody be breaking in? Will there be a gunman at your door? When you drive out, will your car be safe? You're wondering all kinds of things. You're so worried. Sometimes we get so worried that we become sick and we think it's physical issues. It's the mind. We're so worried. We're so worried. We're so worried. But I want to leave this song with you. Why won't you? About tomorrow Why worry If your steps are slow If your life has been spent Serving Jesus My God Then you don't have much further to go. Be strong and keep on going. Keep on going. Come on. Tell somebody, keep on going. If you're starting to serve the Lord, keep on going. Don't get angry.
but my encouragement to you today, be strong. Family, 
Lord, you know their grief, their pain, and their sorrows. But Lord Jesus Christ, you are still their deliverer. You are still their way maker, and you are still their comforter. Lord God Almighty, I pray very special. Hallelujah. Ah, deliverance upon every soul today. I ask that you open the floodgates and that it rains, mighty God. I pray, God, that you will touch them individually and collectively because you take no pleasure in the destruction of man, Lord God. I pray that you bind them together. Lord Jesus Christ, those of that have accepted you as Lord and Savior of their life. Lord, I pray that after hearing your word today, oh, mighty God, that there will be a turn. There will be, oh, God Almighty, Lord Jesus, a level of change. Oh, you said, come unto me. Hallelujah. All ye that have labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For those, Lord God, who started out on the journey, Lord God, those who might be weak, hallelujah, those who might be faced with the other situation, we pray that you will minister to them today. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray now, Lord, that you will take full control, whatever, Lord Jesus, the enemy meant for evil, I pray that you will turn it around for their good, but Lord God Almighty, we pray that you will save them, Lord, we pray that there will be repentance, we pray, God Almighty, that somebody will take heed today, oh God Almighty, those who raised their hands earlier as an indication that they need a touch from you, you know the heart, Lord God, you try the heart, you know what is taking place from within, Lord, we ask you, God, that you'll breathe upon your people. We pray that there'll be a visitation of your spirit. Whatever the situations are, you're able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, we could have asked or even imagined. Lord God Almighty, take charge now. Lord God, minister to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. As we journey from here, Lord, to the great side, Lord God Almighty, we pray to guide, Lord. Oh, mighty God, we pray that you'll take the rest of today's proceedings into your hands. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, take control. We look to you, Lord, we beg of you for mercy. Lord God Almighty, have mercy upon those, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I desperate today. There's some hearts that are yearning for salvation. There's some thirsty souls in this place today. There might be perplexed spirits, Lord God, minds that are troubled. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you will tear down every stronghold because every high place must come down and every stronghold must be broken by the power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, cover your people under your blood. Take full control, I am true now. That you just said to our heart, your words will not return unto you void, but they shall accomplish. Hallelujah. Work on those hearts, work on those hearts. Every soul in this place today, God. There are those that be procrastinating, those in the valley of decision. Lord God Almighty, help your people to make the right decision today to follow you. Salvation is available. You are willing to save, you are willing to deliver. Oh God. Of your own sweet way, Lord, as we leave everything to your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. We are going to recessional him. We are going to be doing the first and the last verses in, after which the ministers will take the lead followed by the casket, followed by the immediate family members and everyone else will exit in that order. Shall we start everyone? We go to recession at in precious memories, unseen angels. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Just 
Come, let, 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 let me have a clean that up. Come. Yeah, man. Let me have a clean shirt. Mm. Oh, Purpose. No, I'm mean, not have a space. Who will care about? Who will care about? Cover on, cover on, come right next time. That's the answer. Sure. Yeah, man, take a time. Take a time. Sorry about the bush. Yeah. Sliding about today. It's not nice sliding.
Yeah. Have it though. Yeah. 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 Jones. No, 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 Somebody black belong me. Thank you. 
We'll lower the casket. We proceed with the committal. Man that is born of a woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He coming up and is cut down like a flower. He fled as it were a shadow and never continued in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of who may we seek for succor? But of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, O Lord, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pain of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secret of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ear to our prayer, but spear us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pain or death to fall from thee. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come to our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to God the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed, and make life unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, from henceforth, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So set the spirit for the rest for the labor and the work. Bow our heads, everybody. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may proceed with covering. As we prepare the covering, let's go to the segment of the program at the website. I will be singing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saints of earth shall gather over all the other shore, and the roll is gone of yonder as it is, when the road is gone of yonder, when the road is gone of yonder, On the bright and flawless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is all of yonder and the roll of yonder is all of yonder. Let us save our fallen master from the Lord who said it's all. 
Don't come searching if you don't find me. You know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of the night. Oh, if you miss me, don't come searching if you don't find me. You know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of the night. Blessing if you miss me. Don't come searching if you don't find me. You know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone.